you get the app Kia Navigation Updater, and then you'll log into your Kia Connect account. And once you do that, you'll have a car you can select here. So I do Kia EV6, okay. And then it lets me tell me, or like select a drive to put it on. You'll have to put a USB drive in there and uh, jump drive. And then you can now select that jump drive. The one I have is not quite big enough. So I can hit next. And then, yeah, it'll format this drive. And then it tells me insufficient space. If you stick a thumb drive in there with enough space on it, you'll be able to download it and then it will copy the files to the drive. And notice that this is 32 gigabytes roughly, so it will take a long time to download and even a longer time to copy to the drive in my case. I actually have a gigabit ethernet connection, so it didn't take too long to download. And But the copying to the drive part took over an hour and a half, so it'll just depend on what kind of hardware you have and set up. The next step is to copy it to the thumb drive. So I have my thumb drive here, and it's way down there. Plug that in. Make sure the car is on and ready. And you notice as soon as I plugged in the drive, it came up with a message, update information. Start the audio system update, and let's do update now. There's some choices here. Update after vehicle's turned off or background update. Press the update button. It'll take about 25 minutes. Update. And we will see what happens here. The first time I tried this, I tried to use a USB card reader with an SD card. And that worked on the computer side, but when I plugged the card into the port down there using the card reader here, it didn't work. And that's because the, the card reader I was using wasn't recognized by the system. So it should work with some, but you might just have to have the right card reader. For this reason, the USB stick thumb drive is probably easier to use. This is going to take a while, so I will check back in as it progresses. Okay, after a couple minutes, it switched to a black booting screen, and it's just sitting here. And system update. And now we're getting a map update. And it's recommending don't touch anything until the update is complete to prevent data loss. I will check back in after a while, because I suspect this part will go slow. Half an hour later and we're still going. A faster thumb drive might be in order. Um, since it took so long to copy the files to the drive, it's not surprising that it takes a long time to copy them off. And a USB SSD drive won't work. I already tried that option. The app on the computer won't recognize it and try to copy to it. With the modem update done, the very last update is UCOM. When that's updating, I notice that there's error messages over here that just suddenly showed up. So that must be on a different computer in the car. About an hour later, this message came up, system update, the system will restart. This happened right after UCOM was finished updating. And my error messages went away at the same time, so those were certainly caused by the update. And doesn't take too long. Give it just a minute here. Well, everything looks a little different. It looks like some of the data is cleared. Oh, there it's restoring the data, it says. 
So it must have saved it before doing the update. After doing the update, which took about two or three minutes, it's restarting again, so probably with the new settings. There, it's back, and it looks like the driver settings are still there. The time is back set. And we are ready to go. So the first thing to check is setup. What's new? Oh, there's a QR code to see what's new. Route options added. Improved voice recognition. Improved radio preset order editing and user interface. I don't think I ever use the radio though. With the update done, checking to see if wireless Android Auto is supported. I didn't figure it would be, but there you confirm that. Please connect a phone over the USB cable. That's just under the phone projection there. Okay, here is the new Android Auto in full screen mode. You will need to turn off the split screen to get this mode, and I'll put a link to my video from the other day on how to do that uh, in the comments below. But here is the new interface and layout, so your audio is over here, so I'm playing Spotify, so it's right there. And then um, your other program is shown here, so I'm in a better route planner right now. Um, this icon shows the right side application. and you know, you have your typical voice and notifications and other settings here for Android Auto. So not much difference there, just the icons moved over here in the full screen view. And unfortunately, you can't actually make the map totally full screen, but at least you have both sides here instead of having just the one screen and having to switch between the two. This is a little cleaner interface. 